later. Come in. Oh, hi. Good to see you. Well, there's George. I'm going to say hello as well. You're good boy, George. Well, George and I do have a seat. George and I are having a sort of relaxed um, Easter Monday morning after all the... I don't know if I've got, I've got some matches there. Um, yeah, so slightly slightly relaxed after the all the, the ser lovely services that ran through from Maundy Thursday when you were last here and Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Some in church at last, some online. And now we just sort of gently take it all in. We had a beautiful day yesterday, but it's quite chilly today. In fact, the snow was whirling down past the window behind you. Anyway, um, I thought, as you, it's always nice when you drop in for these little spells in the library, I thought we might return to the idea of spells themselves. And I'm going to show you the most wonderful modern, magic, modern book, but it's full of beautiful, enchant, literally enchanting poetry uh, about spells by the great Robert McFarlane. But there's a, and it's a lovely signed copy, I'll show it you in a minute. But there's a bit of a story behind it, so I thought I'd tell you that first. So, um, quite a number of years ago, the writer, who, whom I know a little, um, from Cambridge Connections, the great modern nature writer, Rob McFarlane, he published an article, which was in The Guardian, I think, some years ago, um, and it was about, it was, the article might have been called The Lost Words. And as a thing he'd noticed, he loves language and he's a great um, keeper of the word hoard, as the Anglo-Saxons call it. He's a person who loves particularly the vocabulary related to nature. And he wrote this quite distressing article, basically saying that the new edition of the Oxford Junior Dictionary, as it come out then, was losing words in order to make room for new ones. Obviously, there are new coinages. But he drew attention to the fact that in this particular edition, the words they felt children and young teenagers no longer needed anymore to have in a dictionary. He listed them alphabetically. Acorn. Adder. Ash, Bluebell, Heron, Kingfisher, Otter. Extraordinary. And this was to make room for words like celebrity, chat room, upload. And of course it was absurd because celebrity, chat room and upload are just the very words that teenagers don't need to be taught. Or children. But perhaps because there was so much uploading on in things about celebrities and dubious engagements in chat rooms, they weren't actually able to get out there and see things and enjoy the acorn and the ash and the bluebell and the conker and the cowslip and the catkin. Anyway, he wrote this article and I read it. And I was so upset by it. I wrote a poem called Lament for Lost Words of which I sent him a copy, and I'll just read you the poem. It was published eventually in my book, um, Parable and Paradox, that came out in 2016, but I probably wrote the poem in 2014 or 15. Uh, and I, I sent it to him, and I think he enjoyed it. Or well, if enjoy is the right word. So, a Lament for Lost Words. To graceful names and lovely woods, farewell. To acorn, adder, ash, to beech and bluebell. Farewell, old friends, I name you in my sonnet. Buttercup, catkin, conker, cowslip, signet. Farewell, your fields are brick, our books are barren. No dandelion or fern, hazel or heron. We'll go no more alone, no more together. The mountain time is gone and gone the heather. The clinging ivy's gone and soon to go. The kingfisher's blue bolt, the mistletoe, nectar, newt and otter, pasture willow. To their last rites my muse comes footing slow. We'll hear no more the heaven's scaling lark. We'll all go down together 
in the dark. So I wrote this poem of lamentation and I kind of left it at that. But thanks be to God, um, Rob McFarlane did not leave it at that. And some years later, he and the wonderful illustrator Jackie Morris came out with the most magical book. And I was there when it was launched. And I was very uh, honoured that, in fact, he wrote a nice little, when at the launch itself, he, 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 he uh, not only signed it for me, but wrote a little dedication. Now, let me show you the book. I mean, this is just... So, my poem is called Lament for Lost Words. But here is a whole book, The Lost Words, Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris. And it is just the most beautiful book, Lost Words, a spell book. And here's the dedication page. To Malcolm, an enchanter, warmest and wildest wishes, Rob McFarlane. And do you see the way he's put the hyphen between en and enchanter? Because we had talked about chanting and enchantment and spell and spelling and poetry as being part of um, the re-enchantment of the world. So what did he do? It's just stunning. He starts, once upon a time, <coughs> words began to vanish from the language of children. They disappeared so quietly that at first almost no one noticed, fading away like water on stone. The words those children used to name the natural world around them. Acorn, adder, bluebell, bramble, conquer, gone. Fern, heather, kingfisher, otter, raven, willow, wren, all of them gone. The words were becoming lost, no longer vivid in children's voices, no longer alive in their stories. You hold in your hands a spell book for conjuring back these lost words. To read it you will need to seek, find and speak. It deals in things that are missing and things that are hidden, in absences and in appearances. It's told in gold, the gold of the gold finches that flit through its pages in charms. It holds not poems but spells of many kinds that might just by the old strong magic of being spoken aloud unfold dreams and songs and summon lost words back into the mouth and the mind's eye. Isn't that fantastic invocation? I mean, I said to him afterwards, they are, they are poems as well as spells, believe me. So how does it work? Come and have a look. You get a picture and in between, amongst the picture, there are letters, but some of the letters are picked out in a different colour. And you see that A there and that C there. And that O oh, there, and if you're a little child sitting with your mother as you, or father as you did this, you might help to find the letters. There's the R, and there's the N. What might the lost word be? And you turn it over, and there's acorn. Look at that against the gold. It's beautiful. And then, he, he, here's the spell. As flake is to blizzard, as curve is to sphere, as knot is to net, as one is to many, as coin is to money, as bird is to flock, as rock is to mountain, as drop is to fountain, as spring is to river, as glint is to glitter, as near is to far, as wind is to weather, as feather is to flight, as light is to star, as kindness is to good, so acorn is to wood. And of course then the child can see that's true of all the spells. But it's an acrostic and it says acorn down there. So let me show you some of the other ones in here. They are just so beautiful. I'll just show you two others, my favourites. But uh, uh, anyway, the book turned out to be a great success and people loved it so much that they used to club together and, and get it for to give to schools and children's libraries. And it's just the most magical book. So let's look at this one. Um, this is 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 just I think, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spell. So you kind of have a, have a, have a little look. And then what do we get? There's, there's a special K and an I and an N and a G. And look down there, written Fisher. And there's the, something's missing. Where is it? There's the pool. There's the fronds of the willow. Look at that, look at the picture of the kingfisher itself. And here's the spell. This is just so beautiful. This uses the Anglo-Saxon technique of what's called kennings, where you don't name things, it's like a riddle, and you, you hyphenate two words. Like the, the, the Anglo-Saxons, you know, wouldn't call a spade a spade, they'd call it an earth biter. So here's kingfisher. Kingfisher, 
The colour giver, fire bringer, flame flicker, rivers quiver, ink black bill, orange throat and a quick blue black gleaming feather stream. Neat and still it sits on the snag of a stick until with gold flare, wing fan, wick crack, the kingfisher, zingfisher, singfisher, flashes down too fast to follow, quick and quicker, carves its hollow in the water, slings its arrow super swift to swallow, stickleback or shrimp or meadow. Halcyon is its other name, also ripple karma. Water nester, evening angler, weather teller, rain bringer and rainbow bird that sets the stream alight with burn and glitter. And there, of course, it says Kingfisher. Isn't that just completely magical? We'll just do one more. Um, we're really putting the spells back into the spell in the library with this book. It's an open, it's wonderful. But I really love the way, the way, it's not just that the letters are in slightly different things and you can pick them out, but there's always a clue here, now look, here's the surface of the water. Here's the great absence. Most of these letters are gold, but look at this one. There's an O and a T and a T, diving deeper and deeper into the water, an E and an R. And you can imagine pausing with your child and saying, now what is it, what is it? And the child saying, it's otter, otter. And then you turn over the page and look, I mean, just look at that. Um, Jackie Morris's beautiful lithe otter. Otter enters river without falter. What a supple slider out of halt and into water. This shape shifters a sheer breath taker, a sure heart stopper. But you'll only ever spot a shadow flutter, bubble skein, and never, almost never, actual otter. This swift swimmer's a silver miner, with trout its oar, its bores, each black pool deep and deeper, delves up currents steep and steeper, turns the water inside out, then inside out. That's brilliant. Ever dreamed of being otter? That utter underwater thunderbolter, that shimmering twister, run to the riverbank, otter dreamer, slip your skin and change your matter, pour your outer being into otter and enter now as otter without falter into water. It's a wonderful invitation to the children themselves to rush in and dive in and be an otter for a little bit. And there's uh, the otter's so good you get another picture of the two otters playing. So this is it, the lost spells. And it's just, I think, one of the most enchanting books of the last 50 years. It's just, we're living in a bit of a golden age actually, both of nature writing and children's writing. And this surely is the masterpiece that combines the two most beautifully. So um, there's always an extra thrill with any book when you know the author. Um, and um, uh, I, I just couldn't applaud this book heartily enough. And as I say, it was glorious to be there when it was launched in, in Ely at St Mary's Church, uh, the church I used to serve in and when Robert Farland himself wrote in it. There's a poem in my uh, last but one book, uh, After Prayer, uh, which I'll read you sometime, we haven't time to do it now, but I dedicated a, a poem to, to Rob McFarlane and he kindly accepted the dedication. Anyway, it's lovely to see you again and I hope we'll be able, uh, even if the dark spell of our enchaining and uh, our, our restraint in this lockdown, even if that begins to lift, I think uh, it'll be fun just to keep going with these spells in the library, so it'll be good to see you again. Thanks for dropping round.